So one of my statements here is feeding. Every bee book says feed sugar. Every bee book. I, I mean, except uh, Gunter Hauck or some far out, not like me, writing a bee book. Uh, feed them sugar. Why would that happen? Bees take nectar from flowers, and flowers are, they make a sugar that's completely different from beets or cane. Cane sugar is a stalk. A beet sugar is a root. The chemical composition of those sugars is completely different from nectar. And so when you give them this sugar, uh, their bodies have to deal with something they're not meant to deal with. Of course they take it, just like uh, if I gave you a candy bar for dinner, if that's all you had, you'd eat the candy bar. But it's not like it's something you really can use. It, it's something you take because there's nothing else. And so why do we do it? Why do we feed them sugar? It's because it's cheaper. Some beekeepers in the world, in uh, autumn, they take every bit of honey from the bees. So the bees have nothing to live through the winter on. And then they feed them sugar over the winter, because the honey is more expensive. That's very cruel. Uh, another step above that cruelty may be better or worse that many beekeepers kill all their bees and take all their honey, because then they don't have to spend money on the sugar either. And so every spring they buy new bees. So uh, the whole thing, if I was making money on you in my basement, I might not treat you very well. Whenever we try to make money on the humans or living beings, hogs. If you look into any living being, we're making money on chickens. I just saw this wonderful thing about, horrible thing about chicken uh, production. There's nothing we're making money on with animals that we're doing nice things to them, really. Unless it really says we are doing nice things and that's why it's twice as expensive. And so if we put our money toward better conditions, then of course the, the market will build and there'll be more and more people doing better things to animals. But if we keep buying the cheapest thing there is, what, if, what can we say about it? That's how it goes. That's the only way I can say how the feeding idea has come about. Uh, related to that is this uh, colony collapse disorder, which they finally have pointed the finger at a certain pesticide made by Bayer. Monsanto in this country uh, uses it. And that insecticide causes bees to lose their sense of direction. It doesn't kill them directly, but they can't get home. And so uh, they finally found it, but then they said, well, how, does all, how do all these bees get in contact with that poison, which is only in certain places? You're missing something. Science is really good that way. It shows you the flaw in your thinking. Only last month, someone came out with the, the connection. Aha! High fructose corn syrup. The corn syrup the beekeepers are feeding the bees all has that poison in it that we eat ourselves every time we have a hamburger bun or anything with high fructose corn syrup in it. We're eating that poison, but we're not losing our sense of how to get home. It's not enough to cause us that problem, but it does it to the bees. So that's the link. And commercial beekeepers typically feed this high fructose corn syrup, and that's now they've linked it. Uh, the result is that Monsanto purchased the company that found that out. <laughs> this week, Monsanto bought that company. Everybody in that company is very happy. They just got bought out. But you and I will not know any longer. What, what was that story that I heard about that? It doesn't exist any longer because that company is now part of Monsanto. What company is that? Uh, I can find it for you. I don't know the name. Uh, questions on that? Feel free to stand up, it's hard to sit. I, I get to pace. You get to fall asleep. <laughs> Queen excluder, every, every single young hive owner says, where's your queen excluder? Every book says, put your queen excluder here, and then you're super above the queen excluder, and then you'll be all set. So, obviously a queen excluder excludes the queen. It's, uh, the queen happens to be large, and she and the drones are too fat, too large, to get through the queen excluder. So up here in the super, only workers, uh, which is handy if you have a mechanized process of uh, taking the super full of bees, blowing all the bees out. And what they do is they put the thing 
here. All the bees are in there. They have this amazing jet of air. All the bees. If the queen was in there, that would be a disaster because she can't fly. She's laying eggs, a thousand eggs a day. She can't fly. So you can't have the queen in there. There cannot be the queen in there. But you can blow all the bees out, and then you've got a super full honey you put on the truck. And the next one, next one, boom. So if you're making money, you need the queen excluder in order to make money. You and I don't need to make money. We, we can take care of the bees. We don't need the queen excluder making the bees force their way through this wire in the middle of their home. We don't have to do that. Instead, when we come and we see there's honey, we can find out pretty quickly whether the honey is also dotted with larvae. We don't have to take the honey. It says larvae in it. We can say, these bees want, we can say, we can pretend, these bees are saying, we want this honey, we don't want you to take it. And so we lay eggs all through it so you wouldn't take it. And you can then say, thank you for telling me I won't take your honey. You can actually develop a relationship with your bees that way, pretending that they're talking to you. It makes it much more enjoyable than just the mechanistic uh, finding out later, oh my god, all these frames have larvae. I guess we'll just filter them out, you know, as we put the honey in the, in the system. Uh, there's a humane method of getting the bees out of here. It's called a bee escape. So pretend this is a very heavy, heavy, super full of honey with bees, and they don't want to necessarily give it to you, So, and maybe you're a little afraid of them. You will put an empty super above their hive, and then you'll put the bee escape here. It's like a one-way door. It's about this thick, a little thicker. It's got several one-way doors, it's little cone shapes that the bees can go out, but they can't get back, especially if there's an empty space under they go through those little cones and they drop. And so over a couple of days, all the bees here have gone down below. And so you'll come back and find maybe 10, 20, 30, 50 bees in here, which is not bad at all compared to the 10,000 that might have been there last week. So uh, it's much easier, one frame at a time, with your bee brush. I should show you how I always uh, approach any beehive. I've got my veil, not on my hat, but in my pants. <laughs> it's like, I think of it like the cop. The cop does not come into the party with his gun out. Hello, I heard there was a complaint here. No, the cop keeps the gun in the holster much better, and you act much more differently if you don't have the gun out when you approach them. <laughs> when I approach the bees, I look like this. I look like this. And my defense is, if I need it, I can run and put it on and come back. But I have to tell you, I have not worn this for three years. And I'm in my beehives every week. Uh, they have not come after me. I've got this in my pocket and this in my pocket. This is for brushing bees off of things. It's any kind of drafting brush. This is for uh, several things. It's got a book. It's kind of cool that uh, you can separate and then it's got a little lever, and so you can lift the frame out a little bit, pull it out, cover with bees perhaps. There's so many little techniques to learn. If you're brushing bees, they're kind of mad at the brush, but they're mad at the brush. I'm not using my arm, I'm not going like this, so if they're mad at anything, they're mad at the brush. Anyway, there's lots of little techniques. You can take then, this frame may be full of honey, but no bees on it because you've got them off. You then quickly put it in an empty box here and put a lid on it, so none of the bees in the air will find it while you're doing the next one. So it takes maybe 20 minutes to get the frames out of a honey super, but uh, no bees sting you, and you end up feeling like a beekeeper because no bees stung you. It's really quite a nice thing to approach them without without extra I don't know, armor.